Have you ever felt like some months, everything just flows smoothly? Your finances are in order, your relationships are harmonious, and an overall sense of abundance surrounds you. But then other months feel like an uphill battle, money is tight, tensions are high with loved ones, and negativity seems inescapable no matter what you do. What if I told you that according to many cultural traditions and ancient philosophies, the energy you put out on the first day of a new month can dramatically impact whether the next 30 days bring prosperity or struggle? It may sound far-fetched, but for centuries, various practices like Feng Shui, Eastern religions, and other spiritual beliefs have warned that certain actions taken at the start of a new monthly cycle have the power to either attract abundance or poverty, good fortune or ruin into your life. From mundane tasks like washing laundry to more subtle things like the colors you wear, many cultures believe there are don'ts that can throw negative vibrations your way if you're not careful right out of the gate. So if you've ever felt like you just can't catch a break some months, let's look closely what are those stuff let me start with some of the household tasks and dynamics you'll want to be really mindful of on that first day of the new month, according to many traditional beliefs. I know these may sound a bit strange at first, but see if any of them resonate with you. Number 1. Never, I repeat never, get into any arguments or fights with your family members or loved ones right out of the gate. Whether it's bickering with your spouse, snapping at your kids, or feuding with a roommate. These kinds of conflicts and negative interactions are a huge no-no according to various philosophies. You see, it's thought that whatever energy you put out on that first day will just multiply over the following weeks. So if you start month one with hostile fighting energy in your own home, well, you can expect a whole lot more of that draining drama to ensue. I'm sure we can all relate to how one bad argument tends to lead to more arguments, am I right? It's like the negativity gets embedded. So make a conscious effort to keep the peace that first day, even if someone really pushes your buttons. Don't engage, don't escalate, just rise above and refuse to start your month on that sour note. The same idea applies to number two. Avoid disciplining, lecturing or harshly correcting others, especially little kids. Again, many cultures believe you'll just be inviting and reinforcing more of that parent-child conflict and exhausting dynamic of constantly having to reprimand if you start the month off that way. Definitely still discipline if absolutely necessary, but maybe try to have a light touch and reset in a fresh, peaceful way once that new calendar page turns. Now number three is a fascinating one based on Feng Shui principles. It's suggested that on day one of a new monthly cycle, women specifically should not use scissors, knives, or anything involving cutting motions or severing. The idea is that this relates energetically to cutting away and severing things from your life, be it relationships, finances, opportunities. Definitely not the vibe you want to put out there as you're trying to welcome in new positives. So ladies, you may want to ask your husband or male partner to handle any cutting tasks that first day just to be safe. For all of us, number four is a big one to watch out for. Breaking ceramic dishes, vases, mugs or any fragile items made of clay. This is considered extremely unlucky according to multiple traditions. You see, the shattered fragments dispersing outward represent your wealth, good fortune and blessings becoming scattered and fragmented for the month ahead. Not exactly an energetic state you want to create, right? So be very cautious handling ceramics that first day. And if any do happen to break despite your precautions, here's a key step. Make sure to very carefully clean up every last shard and piece, sweeping repeatedly to find them all. Then dispose of the entire bundle all together in one container. Don't let those dispersed broken pieces go in different waste baskets or areas. That would really cement and amplify the energy of your affairs being shattered and fragmented over the next few weeks. The final household precaution relates to laundry. 
Yeah, something as simple as washing clothes on the first day is actually discouraged based on certain Eastern philosophies honoring the water god. Now, you may have heard me talk about the powerful emotional properties of water and its ability to absorb and hold energies. Well, the belief is that on day one, you don't want to be churning up and dirtying that water, as it's considered spiritually polluting and disrespecting the sacred element that flows through all of life. So, if you can avoid doing laundry for just that first 24 to 48 hours, you help maintain purity and respect for this revered life force. Let the water stay undisturbed. Then feel free to wash away as needed starting on day two. Maybe use that first day to focus on clearing out mental and emotional clutter instead before wading into the physical stuff. Of course, when we're talking about welcoming in a prosperous new monthly cycle, financial energy is going to be a big focus. There are several fascinating tips from various cultures about little things you'll want to avoid on day one if you want to help initiate a free flow of wealth and abundance. One is to be very vigilant against losing or misplacing anything, even tiny objects. According to many beliefs, letting something slip away from your possession on that first day, however insignificant it may seem, can actually create an energetic leak that bleeds your prosperity over the following weeks. It's like sending out an unconscious signal that you're okay with things being lost or taken from you going forward. So double check your pockets, keep careful track of your valuables, and if you do misplay something, make a diligent effort to recover it right away. Another money mapping concept relates to the colors you wear, particularly black and white. Now this one varies a bit across cultures, but generally these two shades are often associated with mourning, loss, or lacking vitality, so you'll want to steer clear of them on day one. The idea is that by vibrating at those mournful frequencies through your clothing cues, you could manifest those energies of lack, struggle and lack of prosperity in your material world over the next month. Definitely not ideal for kickstarting an abundant cycle. What about the connection between food and finance? Well, many traditions also suggest avoiding eating any meals on the first day that are considered poverty foods or basic staples associated with lacking wealth. Things like plain rice, beans, lentils, etc. You know, those super inexpensive fillers that low-income households may heavily rely on just to stretch portions. It's believed consuming these on day one can put you in a scarcity mindset and broadcast energetic signals about staying small and limited rather than welcoming expansive flows of richness. Definitely an interesting idea to ponder over your meal choices. The core concept here is that the intention and vibration you broadcast through seemingly small, mundane actions on day, one has a massive impact on the abundance trajectory for your entire upcoming month according to many philosophies. But when you avoid leaks, stagnant energy, poverty mindsets and cues of lack right out of the gate, you set yourself up to welcome fresh prosperity. In addition to being mindful of household tasks and money slash prosperity precautions, there are also several personal activities that various philosophies recommend avoiding on the first day of a new monthly cycle. Some of these may seem pretty trivial, but the intention behind them is to start your month from the most positive and vitalizing place energetically. One suggestion that comes up frequently across multiple belief systems is to not take naps or excessively sleep during daylight hours on day one. Now, this doesn't mean you can't catch up on a little rest if you're truly feeling run down and need to recharge your batteries. But in general, excessive daytime sleeping or laziness is discouraged because it can broadcast lethargic, stagnant energy that you'll be stuck in for the rest of the month. You want to come out vibrant and motivated. Here's another personal activity to avoid if possible, washing or wetting your hair. This relates to the idea that on day one, you'll want to avoid metaphorically washing away any recent blessings, good fortune or prosperity markers you've accumulated before the calendar restart. 
Your hair and crown area is considered a powerful receiver of these positive energies. So by wetting or shampooing right away, some traditions believe you could inadvertently rinse off luck and abundance before it has a chance to really implant those fortunate vibrations. Another fascinating personal precaution relates to not overusing or repeatedly saying one particular person's name out loud that first day. The belief here is that whatever energy you excessively focus on or attach yourself to gets amplified over time. So if you keep vocalizing an individual's name, it could potentially make you overly dependent or fixated on them for the whole upcoming month, throwing your self-sovereignty off balance. Finally, the last personal activity recommendations involve medication. If you can help it, try to avoid taking any drugs, pills, supplements or substances on day one, even basic over-the-counter relief. The intention is that by not activating a sick or healing state right away through introducing medicinal compounds into your body, you avoid kick-starting that unhealthy, imbalanced vibe for the full monthly cycle ahead. You want to exist in a purely vital, thriving frequency if possible. Now of course, if you have a diagnosed chronic condition that absolutely requires medication, no matter what, then by all means, take what you need. Safety and health come first. But avoid any optional pill popping on day one so you can get that momentum going for a vibrant, medication-free month. Now, I know some of these suggestions around household tasks money slash prosperity and personal activities may sound a bit superstitious or far-fetched if you're coming from a very rational, science-based perspective. And that's totally understandable. At the end of the day, these are just potential practices compiled from various ancient spiritual philosophies and cultural beliefs around the world. Not everyone will resonate or feel drawn to implement them. However, if you do find yourself energetically open to concepts like manifestation, law of attraction, and how our focused intentions can shape the unfolding of events in our lives, then following some of these, don't do tips for just the first 24 hours of a new monthly cycle could be a powerful reset. For those who've had experiences of months that started off on a sour, draining note and seemed to snowball from there, Adding a touch of ritual and intention around creating positive vibe for day one may be exactly what's needed to unlock a fresh slate of abundance, blessings and prosperity. The key is simply approaching it with an open mind and playful curiosity. You get to decide what resonates and what to take or leave from this mix of fascinating traditions and philosophies. Now, if you're watching this video and realizing, oh no, it's already day two or later into the new month. Don't stress. It's certainly not too late to course correct if you inadvertently did any of these activities on day one that could potentially bring unwanted energies your way according to these beliefs. The wonderful thing about resetting our intentions is that we can redirect our vibration at any point. You don't have to wait for another new monthly cycle to start fresh. Here's what I'd recommend. Take a few minutes alone whenever you can to center yourself through some deep breathing. As you breathe, visualize your energy field getting cleared and recharged with vitality. See any stagnant or negative energies dissolving away. Then, once you feel more grounded, you can recite a simple ritual phrase to realign with the abundant flow. Something like, I redirect all my energy now towards positive vibrations of prosperity, opportunity, and blessings. Any previous unintentional actions that could have brought struggle or lack are now transformed and realigned with my highest good. You can say that out loud or in your mind's eye, whichever you prefer. But by making that clear intention, you signal your readiness to receive optimal fortune and richness. From there, you can even do a quick restating of affirmative wishes like, I open myself to financial flow. I draw ideal relationships and circumstances to me. My path is cleared for great health and vitality. Any resets along those lines can help get you back on prosperous new monthly footing. 
The key is simply not resigning yourself to lack if you didn't happen to follow all the day one precautions. Use your conscious power to realign and welcome in the positive at any point. So don't beat yourself up if you missed day one. You've got this. Just reset and refocus and get ready to receive those abundant gifts headed your way.